A question from uh, Harry Samuels, please. Are the bullying tactics used by Unite at Grangemouth justification for further restrictions on union activity? There have been complaints about the way Unite acted in Grangemouth and a spat in the House of Commons about it and the Prime Minister um, complaining about the behaviour. Should there be further restrictions on what unions can do? Harriet Sargent. Um, well, I mean, the, what we've seen there has, is, is quite extraordinary. I mean, we've had um, a, a mother and her small children sort of besieged by the union members standing outside with loudspeakers, um, telling that this man's family, uh, neighbours, that uh, neighbours' children, that uh, this man is 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 evil. Um, having posters sent to his family uh, saying that he's on the wanted list, um, and this is just a man who happens to be a, a director of a company, um, a, a, a company that also, uh, I believe, is one of Labour's biggest financial supporters. So you sort of think, if that's how Labour's treating its, its friends, how's it treating its enemies? Uh, so I, I really believe that this, you can't possibly have this kind of behaviour. It's, it's a dreadful um, advertisement for trade unionism and that uh, you know, the politicians must condemn it. What do you make, what do you make of what uh, Len McCluskey said, which is we need no lectures from Cameron, the original Bullingdon bully, and going on to say, complaining about faceless directors who make decisions to close down factories, put their families out of work. They need to understand they can't just disappear back into leafy suburbia. Well... They're not faceless. They've got families, and those families are children under five who've been attacked. All right. Chris Brown. Uh, yeah, I think, um, I think Harriet's absolutely right that the bullying of families is not... Well, bullying is not on, full stop. Um, and I think the kind of culture that sometimes that we have in Parliament, um, which looks like we're all bullying one another, doesn't help uh, when teachers are trying to explain why bullying is bad in schools, actually. Um, but, but I... Um, and I'm sure there are plenty you could say that I, I behave a bit like a bully in Parliament as well, so I, I accept my... Uh, You're that's getting applause a big up there, applause. Applause. yes. <laughs> um, but, 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 I, um, but I do think that sometimes directors of companies need to understand that, in particular if they're big monopolies, they have a responsibility to society as well. I thought it was shameful this week that in the House of Commons, when you had the, the, um, the people from the big six energy companies, only one of them sent their chief executive. No. All of the chief executives should have been there. Mm. If you're in charge of the company, and frankly, if you're earning millions of pounds, and many of these people have doubled their wages in the last two or three years, um, then I think you have to take responsibility for your actions. And that means that sometimes you do have to be up there and out there and up front. And, and... What did you make of the way that Unite handled the Grangemouth affair? Because it seemed to be they called the employers bluff and then the employers called their bluff and then everything was conceded just like that overnight. Uh, was, it, it a good, was it a good negotiating tactic? I've only ever been in, in, engaged in one similar kind of event, which is when Burberry wanted to close its factory in the Ronda. Um, and I was very opposed to it, and I campaigned very hard with the local assembly member, Leighton Andrews, and with the GMB, the trade union, because they represented the workers. And we always knew that there was a danger in the end that we'd have to sue for peace. And in the end, I went to the chairman and we did sue for peace. But we did manage, through that campaign, to quadruple the amount of um, support that was given to the workers in the mm -hmm. factory. And we got one and a half million pounds given to the local community mm -hmm. to set up a new charity. Yeah, but talking about McCluskey... So, well, well did, did, I, it's did, just that's that... fine I'm, you talking about your experience there. Jack Straw, senior Labour member, says that... Len McCluskey put internal union politics before the interests of their members. Well, Do you the agree point, with the Jack point, Straw or with Len McCluskey? The point I was going to make was that I, because I'm sticking with my point, I'm afraid, is yeah, well, that... you could be courteous enough to answer mine. Yeah, <laughs> I'll try my best, David. I was going to say just that, which is, I think, an answer to your question, which is that I think it looks to me as if they overplayed their hand dramatically. And, and consequently, they would have been better to have done what we did in relation to Burberry and the GMB trade union, and I'm a proud trade union member, I will not have anybody um, try to deny that individual trade union members who pay their levies, who are normally um, tea ladies in, in schools and all the rest of it, have a perfect right to have their voice heard. Right. <laughs> Paris Leeds. 
Well, I'm a campaigner and um, I do feel um, a lot of sympathy for the, the union in this because they obviously just want to try and make some positive changes. But I think it's much better to focus on kind of positive engagement with people rather than the kind of tactics that they've used. And I think we see this again and again, don't we? Which is, you know, kind of groups that have got very good causes, you know, and their aims are quite noble, but then they use these kind of tactics that really don't win people over. Mm. Um, but I guess in response to the question, um, do we need legislation? Um, well, you know, they've either they're harassing this family or they're not. And I think, you know, it, it, we already have laws in place with that. And I think, you know, just to bring it on to press regulation as well, it's should we have press regulation? And it's like, well, we've already got laws in place, so why don't we just kind of, you know, enforce them? Mm -hmm. Man in blue. The idea that we have these sort of faceless directors is poppycock when we have the faceless union uh, executives mm. who in this case nearly shut down a factory employing 800 people <clears throat> uh, just because they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't shift on their, on their demands. It was down to, I read in the news, it was down to about a 50-50 vote on the matter. The idea that 51% and union executives who are putting pressure on their members to shut down a factory and make 800 people lose their jobs, I think is reprehensible. And you asked the question, do you, you asked the original question, do you think further restrictions on unions are required? I think the idea of this, of what Unite have called leverage, I think it's sickening, to be perfectly honest, that, that groups of, of thugs can go round and, and, as Harriet said, accuse these people of being evil uh, and put wanted posters through the doors. So, yes, I do think that these further restrictions need to be placed. Matthew Hancock? I think that um, this shows the tremendous gap between most trade union members um, who are hard-working and pay their dues um, and want to be represented and the leadership, and in this case an, is a sort of extreme leadership, and I agree very strongly with what Harry said there, that holding to ransom a plant that is a tenth of the Scottish economy uh, for political reasons is outrageous in order to have this internal debate within the Unite Trade Union and the Labour Party. And it's amazing that the man who is in charge of this <coughs> and who took this, led this action from Unite's point of view is still the chairman of the local Labour Party. It's extraordinary. So we've got to support union members, and I'm a strong supporter of trade unions, but when their leadership behave like this, then they need to look at themselves very hard in the mirror. What frightens me is the next step the union are going to be is a branch of the Ku Klux Klan getting on anybody who they don't agree with and attacking their families. If they'd attacked me, I'd have been out there sorting them. <laughs> Can I just say, I think That's it's really... Same. Oh, I think it's really easy to kind of condemn these kind of tactics and they are wrong but what about the kind of violence that the Tories are doing to you know um, people with mental health issues people with disabilities you know like you say people that wear suits and stuff are hurting the people of this country every day and, and they're not getting condemned for it you know Jeremy Brown well, <clears throat> um, I support constructive trade unions and they can make a real positive difference on behalf of the people they represent and indeed on behalf of the company that they interact with. And if you look at, for example, the British car industry, it has gone from strength to strength. We're now manufacturing more cars in Britain uh, than we've been doing for decades. And that is in part because the unions have had an enlightened, constructive attitude towards inward investment and the best interests of their members and the workforce. But that's very different from what's happened uh, in this case. And I can only observe that the Unite Union is out of control and has let power go to its head. It's the biggest funder of the Labour Party. It selected its own candidate for Labour leader over and above the wishes of Labour members uh, and Labour members of Parliament. Um, and its behaviour generally, uh, I agree with Jack Straw. I think that they are running out of control. They're trying to influence Labour selections. The Falkirk selection remains a sort of outstanding sore, unresolved by the Labour Party. And the unions have to get back to remembering what they exist to do, and that's to advance the day-to-day -day interests of their members. And I say, when they get that right, they can make a real positive difference. But for me, Unite have got it completely wrong. But one thing they've... But one thing... But one thing they've got absolutely right 
is that you've got three politicians here and we are all virtually identical. We come from the same kind of background. We've got, <laughs> two of us have got the same care colouring even. And frankly, there are far too few working class MPs. And I absolutely support the campaign of Unite to try and get more working class people into Parliament. But you don't boost that by going and intimidating no, of course people's you don't. children. Of course yes. you don't. And I've, I've already said that I think that that, that behaviour is absolutely reprehensible. But I do support trying to change the kind of people who get elected to Parliament, and that's what the Labour Party was originally founded to try and do, and we failed on that in recent years. I fully accept that. Um, but we, and that, that's why I have an apprenticeship Red system Herring. in my office and all the rest of it. No, it's not, because you're attacking the whole right. basis of the, uh, of the trade maybe, union. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe you should stand down in the Ronda and make way for somebody more suitable. Uh, I doubt at some point I will. I'll I doubt, stand in your I doubt right. it. You